Welcome back. Uh, this is being filmed on Wednesday, February the 10th, 2016. Our guest in this segment is uh, Arafin Graham. We're going to be talking about Tent City, uh, meaning the Tent City that's been set up at the courthouse uh, just off of downtown Victoria. Um, so, Arafin, why are you carrying a pillow with you today? Why am I carrying a pillow with me today? Good question. Jack, Let, thank let's you. hold it up a little bit Th more. Thanks for asking it. Can, okay. you, can you see that there, yeah, there's there the pillow? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm carrying a pillow because I'm on my way to the tent city to deliver this okay. so that somebody will have a pillow when they go to sleep tonight. And I suppose a pillow is a symbol of home and it is a symbol of, I guess, the place where we can hang our hat and the place where, where we are living at any particular time. Um, so, I mean, that's, uh, you know, we forget that people are actually living out on the streets, you know, even yeah. though we see them every day. Yeah. Um, it's an absolute disaster for, for those people spe mm -hmm. spe specifically, but for all of us in our society. Well, I think it is. And last time I, last time I came on your show, Jack, we talked about community building and community engagement. And as a student of community building and community engagement, I've become very interested in what's happening at the Tenth City. Um, because they are inventing their own way of living as they go along. And it can't be an easy thing to do. Uh, you know, even in the most privileged parts of society, we can't, we, we find it a challenge to function and make good decisions together. And so if you take a community like like the Tenth City, um, you know, there, there are additional challenges to how to build a great community and how to make decisions together. Well, what's it, what's it like to be there? What, what I've heard yep. is that, uh, you know, there's trouble, there's noise at night, there's, right. there's uh, trouble for the neighborhood. Yep. That's, that's sort of what I hear. So you hear those things. That's, that's yeah. through the media. Sure. Now, I know a lot of people are living there who are good people. They just have nowhere yeah. else to go. Yeah. Have you been there? I walked past it a couple okay. of times, yeah. that's all. So when it, when it uh, I guess, started, was it November, December? You know, I, I go past that part of town sometimes. I was driving by, and I, I, I start to think about it. I think, well, w what's going on there, and how can I connect and understand for myself what this place is? And um, a couple of weeks ago, my dear wife was uh, looking through our basement. We have a, had a couple of foamies sitting down there, which weren't being used. And she, she said to me, Willuia said to me, uh, Erfin, would you please take these over to the, over the tent city, the courthouse? I'm sure somebody would like to have them. So that was my entree to actually going there. And I arrived and, and talked to somebody. And he said, well, I can just take them in for you if you want, or if you want, you know, come with, come, me. Come with me. And I said, great. I, I want to come with you. I want to learn about what's going on here. And what I experienced in that 10 or 15 minutes that I was there was I experienced community, I exper experienced a welcome, I experienced friendliness, and I experienced, I guess, in some level, uh, love in that place. And so that was, for me, uh, a good way to learn about what is happening in this part of our community right now because it is part of our wider community um, and, and that was that was my way to actually and the Times colonist Bruce Stotesbury did us you know this wonderful uh, article the other day uh, of uh, the faces of the tent city and and this is the thing is, is if we can actually meet people get to know each other then it's a way of making it a human to human relationship and exchange, and much easier to empathize, I think, with people if we know who they are. I mean, it's easy for us in, in this, and we do, I, I believe we live in, a, in an overprivileged city here. In, in, and Only the best place in the world. Well, yeah, it's, uh, well I believe it, yeah. you know. <laughs> uh, How lucky can we and be? And it's easy for us who can just drive by, not have to deal with it. It's easy for us who can have a nice job with, with a newspaper writing editorials about uh, about what what we think these people should or shouldn't be doing. However, I think there's w only one way of really getting to know 
what's going on there and really understanding, and that perhaps is to show up. And now, obviously, we, we can't, can't all show yeah. up there, so maybe if, if a few of us do that. And, and one thing they said to me when, when I went there was, you know, please spread the word that, that we are doing what we can here to build community and that people are, are welcome to come. And you don't have to bring something with you. You can just bring, you, you can just bring yourself and just be here with us for a little while. Uh, and I certainly felt that welcome. And so I went back yesterday uh, at 10 o'clock on weekday mornings. They have a community circle. And I stood in the circle for a couple of hours and as, as the talking stick went around and hearing about where people are at. And, and, uh, and then there were a number of visitors there. Uh, Al Tizik was there, uh, Don Evans from, from our place. Uh, Bishop Logan McMenemy was there from the cathedral. Uh, and so there were a number of visitors and a number of, of residents as well. Uh, and that was a, a very rich experience. And I felt that, uh, yes, perhaps there are things that I could bring to this community, skills or experience that I have, or material things. You know, th perhaps there are things. At the same time, I feel that it's, it goes both ways. Yes, that yes. there are things for me to learn being there. There are things that I have not experienced in what I consider the privileged life that I have led just by putting myself in that place and being there and getting to know some of those people and hearing what they have to say and where they're at with their lives. You also wanted to talk about this. Mm -hmm. Do you think there is a link between the headlines about $2 million yeah. homes in Vancouver being huh. bought and then torn down on the west side of Vancouver is there a link between that and tent cities here in Vancouver, uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. here in Victoria and there in Vancouver? Uh, so we've been talking about the personal, and that's the personal, you know, face-to-face, person-to-person contact with, with, uh, with, with people. Um, so I guess this question is about the systemic issues that perhaps are being raised by having a community such as this within our community right now. Um, having been to Calcutta several times, I mean, Calcutta is a, is a city, from what I understand, if you, if you live in India and you're poor, it is the best city to live in because Calcutta has been set up to take care of people who are poor, who are hungry, who um, have needs in their lives which, which aren't being met. Uh, you know, you, you see, uh, and so it's a place where that is an expectation of life, and that's how but it's not our expectation of life in Victoria. However, there may be precedents, uh, you know, in, in the Depression, for example, where tent cities were, Hoovervilles, weren't they all over, you know, the United States, um, where these communities arise for systemic reasons. And so is there a link? I, and I don't know if there's a link, but I suspect there may be. Because these, and so a couple of things happening in Vancouver, you know, multi-million dollar properties, which, you know, Teardowns on the west side, houses which are maybe only 20 years old, being torn down to make way for some bigger house. I mean, it's kind of nuts that we're that we're not. Um, well, and you'd have to say, or I would say that that is. People say, well, what is Canada's housing policy? And I'll yeah. tell you, that is Canada's housing policy mm -hmm. to vastly inflate the price at the high end for everybody. Yeah, yeah. By having an artificial shortage which means at the bottom end, there's absolutely nowhere for people to live. Right? Yeah. So they're forced yeah. out at the bottom, and everybody else who can afford it is forced to pay fortunes, and somebody is skimming a lot of mm. money out of this. So I suspect there's a link. Uh, you know, I, it would take more research to, to really find out what those links are and what is happening systemically. And it, it is, is, is having a tent city in our midst, it's a reflection of our system, I think. Absolutely. Um, and it's easy to sit back and judge by the, by the norms of our system that, oh, this, you know, they, sh they shouldn't be on, th that's, that's Really, we should property. judge ourselves. We shouldn't judge them. Well, we I should think, judge ourselves I and think say, it would how be healthy. have we allowed this yeah. to happen right in front of our eyes and we don't even know what's happening. We think it's, it's their fault. That's what we're told. I think it'd be healthy to have some of that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That discussion, that debate. But where do you find it? Uh, you never um, hear, you know. Well, you know, you invited me to come on the show yeah. uh, a couple of weeks ago, and then I thought, well, well, what do I want to talk about? And for me, this is what is has come to the fore, and and asking that asking the question of myself and of our of our community is, 
is what is our attitude towards this and and how can we accept that this is part of our community right now and what can my attitude be towards this in fostering community and not having this division between it's it's them in the tent city and it's us and, and it's us out here because i believe ultimately it really is all of us together absolutely and i think that's what bernie sanders in the united states is talking about he's talking about yeah where the problem comes from is from the super rich at the top, the 1% of the 1% who really have a huge amount of control and it's in their interest to create the situation that we all have to deal with and they've created it and we're, I mean, I don't like walking past people camping in the parks near where I live, it's crazy, mm. but there's nothing I can do about it. That's what our society mandates and until we can change together, change the society, it's not going to stop. So this, I believe, is an opportunity in our midst. I know it's an opportunity for me to learn something about, about other people, about other forms of community, and to be asking those questions about what is it about our system that, has, that, that creates a situation that we, that we have here. Uh, and who knows, this, this may, uh, as, you know, capitalism sort of uh, continues on its merry way. There may be more of this. Going oh, that's on. So, the plan. So, so these things become more of a norm than they are now. Yes. Who knows? I'm not promoting it. I'm not saying that I would like to see that, but it may, or it may not, depending on how well we can build a Away full community together. Jonathan, that's exactly the point, but we're out of time. We'll have we're to cover time. it Yay. next time. <laughs> Thank you for watching this segment of Citizens Forum. <laughs>